How dare you? Well, <laughs> 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 so I got, I got, I got a, I got a haircut. So, um, big news. Mac OS Big Sur. I was gonna say Big Sierra, but that's that's different. That's not a thing. But point is, we, we, we have Big Sur on this laptop today, and we are going to uh, take an initial first look at Beta 1. Now, this being Beta 1, obviously there's gonna be room for improvement down the line. Not all of this is set in stone and final, but it gives us a pretty good idea as to what we should expect in the fall when this releases to the public. So like, first things first, uh, let's just talk about general design. G general design has actually shifted quite a lot. Uh, things are cleaner, things are more accessible. Basically, if, if you follow my Twitter, you, you could have seen a possible tweet storm that I made a couple nights ago talking about some of the iconography and some of the design that they've decided to uh, update. Some of it's good, some of it's um, not. See, I think a big focus with, with design language this year was uh, neumorphism, which is not to be confused with skeuomorphism. Uh, skeuomorphic design is uh, pretty much like Picture images iOS 6, like that type of textural design and heavy drop shadows, heavy gradients, that's skeuomorphic. Neumorphic is kind of a, a mixture of flat design and skeuomorphic design bled into one. So you're gonna see a lot of drop shadows, you're gonna see a lot of realistic lifelike elements brought into flat, clean design. And this, this this is this is weird. It's like it's like they tried to go for neumorphism, but they kind of set back to skeuomorphism in a weird way. Like it's kind of a mixture, a mishmash, if you will, of iOS six design elements and a lot of iOS seven design elements. It's kind of odd. Now, obviously, with this being beta one, some of it is probably subject to change. But uh, knowing Apple, some of it's probably going to stick with us. I think first things first. Uh, don't pay attention to the, the shit that's all over my keyboard, but um, icons. There's a lot of new redesigned icons with some heavy drop shadows and uh, some pearlescent kind of color schemes. I think these ones here are probably the worst of the mix, in my opinion. There's some really questionable ones, especially going into the other tab, uh, like this Sticky's Note and the chess one, and uh, that keychain one is just a... Uh, is just awful. But, um, you know, we're definitely starting to see some iOS 6 vibes in uh, the skeuomorphic design language entering back into things. Uh, and I, I don't love it, but, um, you know, it's interesting. I think specifically looking at like the FaceTime and Messages icon, like that gives you a pretty strong concept of what they're trying to go for, but in reality, it just doesn't really make sense or look good. Another thing to like pay attention to as like a designer for, for software like this is how do things translate to a smaller view? Like things can look great, blown up, much bigger, but once you go down to smaller size, especially like if you're trying to uh, go into like share and then you see these things in the little drop down icon, they don't translate to being smaller as well as they do just being larger and they look possibly even worse. Like simple flat iconography with a share sheet is definitely the way to go over heavy drop shadows and uh, a lot more dimension. But you know, I, I could probably go on about iconography for, for a little bit, but I'll save you the time. Now, another big update change that they've made uh, on just overall usability UI is uh, they've brought Control Center to the Mac. So if you click on this little Control Center, you have Wi-Fi, you have Bluetooth, you have AirDrop, and you have all of these little controls that weirdly feel a little janky for mouse input. A lot of this stuff looks and feels like you should be able to touch a screen and, and use your finger, but um, obviously this is not a touch screen, so instead you're using your mouse. But you know, you, you have you have a bunch of stuff here. You have your your media control, a lot of a lot of stuff that's reminiscent of your control center in iPhone or iPad. But you know, up here we we will see uh, some updated icons still, new battery, new spacing for all of these. Uh, Siri looks kind of similar. Um, like when, when you use it, oh God, there's overlapping elements, oh shit. And then you got, you know, all of this. And you know, some of this stuff has really subtle changes, like little little drop shadows. There, there's an overall uh, consensus of, uh, let, let's take away contrast with this update. 
which is a choice. I think building on something that, that Quinn Nelson said on Twitter recently, which I really agree with, it's like design is great and overhauling design is can, can be wonderful, but it's like if it interferes with overall usability down the line, is it really worth it? Like it's important to design for functionality first and foremost, aesthetic is great, but if it's coming at that expense of actually being able to use your device, then that's not good design. But you know, there, there's there's a bunch of those things. We also have uh, widgets in the, um, I guess you can call this like your notification center. Uh, and you know, you can change these widgets. You can make them uh, large, medium, small. You can uh, get these little MSL buttons that again, feel kind of like they should be touch input, but you know, hey, whatever. But this is very reminiscent of iOS 11 design, not 11, 14, 13, 14? Isn't this 14? This is 14, I've lost track. But this is very reminiscent of iPhone, but this is very reminiscent of recent iPhone UI elements. Uh, and you know, it looks great, welcome to edition, uh, and you can throw them in there. Notifications pop up up here, uh, and it looks, really good. Now diving in a little further, they, they've also updated Safari. And Safari looks cleaner and more like Chrome. You can also uh, cho choose a background now, so that's that's fun. I think we should take uh, one of Apple's pride and joy uh, icons to be the background of my new Safari. Doesn't that look so wonderful, so crispy? But yeah, no, that's, that's a thing that Apple thought that we should have but I think, I think uh, one of the most underrated things here, uh, to be completely honest, is uh, that's not me, that's an ad. This is how you order all this delivery food yes. for cheap. So one of the most underrated things I think about this update is the fact that you can now uh, natively in Safari, oh wait, no, you can't. I thought that was the thing. I thought you could finally play 4K in Safari. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I thought you could do that. I guess not. I guess the internet lied to me. That's fine. It, like, a lot of the updates that happened at this year's WWDC were very privacy-focused, which I appreciate. Um, and, like, you know, there's this, this new tracker option where you can see, like, basically what permissions Safari is either granting or the website's trying to request. So that's nice to see. I, I love transparency in that respect. But you know, again, it's like, it's it's all about the cost benefit analysis of design. It's like, is it going to actually um, improve your usability using the actual computer, using the software? Because that that's kind of what it's about, right? I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough job for designers, huh? But besides that, you know, I just I just wanna be a little shitty boy and, uh, and just laugh at, icons and iconography, just a little bit more. So, best one first, battery, 69%, nice. Some Someone on Twitter said it looks like a nipple. It's a battery nipple. I won't be able to not think about that from this point forward. I guess all batteries kind of look like nipples, but this one specifically. It's a very long nipple. It's a very long Like it just, it just like low key reminds me of, uh, of like iOS 6, like gradient design where like everything had a gradient and like now this has a great it looks like that or no even even worse like it looks like like android gingerbread like that that type of that type of shitty gradient design but also you know like we're we're, we're seeing a lot of these like, like notifications and sound those look odd very odd and it's like you know some of these icons look Absolutely great. Like this desktop and screensaver and this this general icon, like they look fantastic. And it just like it adds even sharper of a contrast to some of these other icons that just don't fit in. Like I think it is important to remember design language first and foremost. Pneumorphism is flat elements with real life effects on fake composition. I hope that makes sense. But like, take a look at Dieter Rams. Like, that's that's real product in the world with flat, clean lines, but obviously very real life textures, very real life shadows. All of those elements, I think, perfectly describe neumorphic design. Like, th there you are. That's, that's neumorph, it's a really hard word to say. Neumorphic design. See, look, that looks great. Or these, these look, Fucking phenomenal. But there's a stark contrast in between this look 
and this look. Like this is going from iOS 6 skeuomorphic to iOS 7, which is basically flat. There, there's no new morphism there. Kind of, kind of game center, but that, that's pretty much it. But basically, blend those together. You should have, you have a spectrum, right? You have new morphism, skeuomorphism. You need to land in the, you need to land over here. Flats in the middle. Apples over here. That's not what we want. This has been a very shit posty video in the sense that I'm just like, I'm very passionate about my design. I'm very passionate about good design and I'm very passionate about specifically and most importantly, functional design. Like, look at that, that's good. I don't know why this is under skeuomorphic because this is, this is duomorphic, this is good. This is very, this is what we want. We like this, this is what we want. But like in, in, in summation, because this has been very ranty and I apologize. I'm just very passionate. I believe that good design is first and foremost a functional effort, a functional endeavor. When it gets in the way of that, it is no longer good design. Shut the fuck up. Listen, these icons get the point across. They do. They, they're kind of an eyesore, don't get me wrong, but it's like, why, why, why do you need that? That's just a waste of space. It's not smart and it's shitty design. I mean, it's like you can barely fucking read that text. 64%, you can barely read that. And I have good eyes. I mean, also, can, can we just talk about too, how touch bar design is still largely the same. Like it has not gotten that much better since the point it debuted. And like this control center just like, makes the the design of the touch bar, something that's right underneath it, look even more outdated. It's like you have a functional element that is easily accessible, utilize it. And like this clunky, that doesn't even work, it was f This is not, this is not practical. Like, I don't know, when you have a second screen, feel free to take away elements from the main screen and just simply have them on the touch bar. And that's a very daring comment because this works only 5% of the time. But like, I, I don't understand redundancy in design, I think is, is also my point here. And there's a lot of redundancy going on. So, <sighs> but also like, I, I feel like just going through overall usability of this software, going through menu systems, going through the, the new revamped design of applications, it leaves me more confused than clear. Like if you're trying to go for a more, um, let's call it iOS interface, a more, a more uh, memorable UI across all platforms, then sure, go ahead and do it. But don't create a hybrid just because you wanna at least hint at uniformity. But no, I just, you know, I, I'm, I think I'm more so just, just pissed to the farthest extent because like, they played that intro, that opening video in the WWDC keynote. B basically the opening remark was like, Our goal was to bring even more clarity to the design of the software. And I was like, okay, cool. That is a statement. That is a, that is a great entry point. And then there's this, and they didn't do that. They just basically took the familiar points, gave it a fresh coat of paint, and in a lot of ways made it more confusing through bad design. Like, please bring clarity to the Mac. Bring, bring clarity to a lot of these elements that you've decided to add and refine. That'd be great. But yeah, no, I mean, like, listen, again, I'm not trying to be super unfair. I'm not trying to, you know, judge before the final version. This is beta one, but knowing Apple's track record and Apple's history, a lot of what happens and what you see in beta one is eventually, unfortunately, what ships. It's like these icons, these icons have been published way too much online at this point to not ship with the final version of this. But it's like, you can only hope that Apple does stick to that commitment of trying to bring clarity to a lot of their elements um, through menu systems, through just the, the touch bar, which is still a mess. And I mean, like this control center, is promising. I, I hope that they take a lot of, of, of this and they make it smart, but I was under the impression for a long time that the touch bar was going to be your control center. That was aiming to be the control center. And now they put it up here 
so what what is what is this? Are they just gonna get rid of the touch bar in the next generation of Macs? I wouldn't be opposed to that. It's kind of just a a waste of space, if you will. But no, it's just, it's just redundancy that that just makes it more confusing and not more clarifying. I mean, also, you know, the question entered my head, uh, is Johnny Ive still with the company behind software? Is he, like, is this is this the first version of the software that he does not have final say over the way things look and the way things behave? Because uh, that could be interesting, seeing that, that change of hands. Because I remember when iOS 7 launched and Johnny Ive was like at full helm after uh, Forstall left and things had a weird shifting point. For, for the most part, they were going in the right direction. Software just completely shifted uh, and things got better. So are we seeing that again now? But you know, I'll finish off this video with um, doing one of my favorite things whenever I see new software, which is going over wallpapers. And we have this, this wonderful dynamic desktop that switches between colors. We have th these bright ones. We also have this, this new, um, this new dynamic night one that thinks it's night right now, but it's not, it's very much not night. But there we are, there's my rant. There's my disembodied thought compilation, T-H-O-T. Um, I, I will keep this updated, I will, because Mac OS is very important to me. It's how I run my business. It's how I edit my videos. It's the only computer that I use. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing what the next few betas actually involve in terms of actually acting upon clarity and organization, because that'd be great. Anyways, um, thank you all for watching this video. Uh, this video is sponsored by Dbrand. This is their Swarm skin, which looks so incredibly cool with that color shifting kind of effect. That nice sheen, like color changing sheen. I'm sorry that I can't fit this in my mouth. Have a good one. I love you all. Stay safe out there. Bye now.